well. It's lasted a long time for you. I mean, you're still out here doing these songs, you know, you're still on tour. I do, but I don't take it for granted. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I, mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my end. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and, in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. Bob Dylan's Real Link to the Rolling Stones by Miles Mathis. I also own several of Dylan's early records. I thought a lot of the lyrics were brilliant, and I still do. I no longer believe Dylan wrote them, but that doesn't change my opinion of the lyrics. His early performances are also often very good, and nothing will take that from him. Dylan was not without talent, but he was not who you thought he was. Miles Mathis. The, the latest clues we have of that are very recent. And rather than start at the beginning, I'll start at the end. In 2012, Dylan was given the Presidential Medal of Freedom Award by President Obama. He accepted it with a grin. The Dylan we were sold in the 60s wouldn't have done that. You will say that he got old and lost his ideals. And I wish that were so. It isn't. He is the same person now he always was. He just lost his pretty face and his lyrics. The same can be said of Joan Baez, pictured above. She is still an Obama supporter. She has kept up the fake liberal facade a lot better than Bob, but she is the same person she was back then. That is to say, a controller of the opposition, a phony, an actor, a person hired to play a part. Miles Mathis. Even more recently, Dylan has been doing Chrysler commercials. Don't blame me for tearing your heart out with this paper when your heart should have already been bled dry by watching those commercials. It is sort of like watching Gandhi as the spokesman for Monsanto or Martin Luther King schlepping pharmaceuticals for Pfizer. But let's go back to the beginning when Dylan was supposed to be the voice of a generation. Once again, the evidence is pretty easy to compile. As usual, Wikipedia, which you would expect to be totally whitewashed, is full of red flags. All you have to do is open your eyes. Most people know Dylan was born Robert Zimmerman to a prominent Jewish family in Duluth, Minnesota. Most don't realize how prominent they really were. I didn't know until recently when I read that his uncles and great-grandfather owned movie theaters around Hibbing. With more research, that fact grew. Dylan's great-grandfather and uncles owned the biggest movie theaters in Hibbing, Minnesota, allowing a young Dylan to watch films for free. Well, it's lasted a long time for you. I mean, you're still out here doing these songs, you know, you're still on tour. I do, but I don't take it for granted. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my end. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? 
<laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and, in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. Mathis's research on Bob Dylan highly suggests that the Zimmerman family were extraordinarily well-connected and not just in Hibbing or Duluth. In fact, his research suggests that Bob Dylan is related to the billionaire Eugene Zimmerman of Cincinnati, a railroad tycoon who was on the board of Standard Oil. Eugene's daughter, Helene, became the Duchess of Manchester, Montagu. And Zimmerman not only arranged the marriage, but bought the entire dukedom, including castles and lands. Helena later divorced Montagu and married Keith Falconer, Earl of Kintor. Eugene Zimmerman also worked with Marconi, alleged inventor of the radio. That we know now, the patents were probably stolen from Tesla. Dylan's father, Abe, worked for Standard Oil, and by 1941, he was management level at Standard Oil, a Rockefeller-owned asset. Before we move on to the big cities, let's look a little closer at Hibbing. A list of prominent people from Hibbing throws up some real head scratchers, including Vincent Bugliosi, Bruce Carlson, Gus Hall, and Chi Chi LaRue. Gus Hall is the former leader of the U.S. Communist Party. This is the Wikipedia page for Gus Hall, head of the U.S. Communist Party. Mathis sees a red flag here and would like for you to consult his paper, which exposes Marx himself as an early intelligence asset. Bruce Carlson is a four-star general and director of the NRO. The NRO is one of the big five intelligence agencies, along with the CIA, DIA, NSA, and NGA. Carlson is also one of the heads of the Mormon Church. Vincent Bugliosi was the attorney who prosecuted Charles Manson. So some strange things appear to be coming out of Hibbing. Miles Mathis, with socialism just around the corner, I feel an obligation to address what I've learned about the peerage by working with them extensively in an intimate fashion. After extensive research, Mathis suggests that Dylan did not write the lyrics of his great songs. Should you read Mathis's paper on Bob Dylan and the Rolling Stones, you will probably agree with him that these lyrics were written by a four more sinister entity and for a four more sinister reason, perhaps a diversion as Mathis suggests. I can only say that I worked with these people for 11 years. They were polished, composed, refined, cultured, and sophisticated. But then I came to find out they were lacking in civility and compassion. All they really knew was fear and doubt. The peerage will do anything to keep their status. Don't be fooled. One thing I can guarantee is that the plot will thicken. When you think in terms of bare bones, politics doesn't seem so confusing. The rich want to keep what they have, 
and the poor just want to survive. It's impossible for anyone to exist under the radar anymore. Those days are long gone. You don't even have to do the research. All you have to do is read the hard work of the research someone else has done. It should be your obligation to yourself and to the well-being of your loved ones. To say the least, at least be informed. I would like to thank Mr. Mathis for all his hard work and dedication to the truth. Thank you for listening. Miles Mathis's writings can be read at milesmathis.com. Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my end. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth, and in, uh, and then in the world we can't see.